So there was a little problem with the analysis I had, which was, well, people still have to dump shares of something. The Eries were the least valuable, and what we saw was the first two players dropped their Eries, and in fact, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He picked up this pen. He dropped an NYC as well. That puts us in an interesting position. Eries don't count anymore again. Uh, well, obviously, they're worth owning if they don't count. The question is, are they worth more than an NYC? I think the answer is yes. This guy has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He can't buy anything but Eries. So I think people are going to purchase up those Eries. And then if anybody has a spare space for the NYC, the first one to get that will probably pick that up. But if the choice is between an Eerie or the NYC, the NYC is the better stock purchase. So... That kind of decision has to be made. For this guy, it's no problem. He has to take the URI. But what about this guy? Two, four, five, six, seven. He can grab the NYC. In doing so, he may lose the URI and give somebody a bonus. In a sense, the sales of those URIs drop the price down here to where it now is valuable to everyone else. But the two people who dropped it can't pick it up now. And we see everyone who could picked up URIs, except for this guy who grabbed the NYC. Now... <laughs> He was in an interesting position because if he picked up the Erie, could he have gotten the NYC as well? Uh, he probably made a mistake by buying that. Um, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No one else could have picked up that NYC. So he should have picked up the Erie that would have protected it. He lost the presidency because of a big mistake on his hand. Uh, that's going to cost him the production of a stock uh, certificate. Everything goes up in value, which is kind of interesting because it puts these clearly in sort of a leading position. And well, I'll let the mistake lie because I'm sure I've made lots of other mistakes. I've got a thousand dollars marked here with this red die because. I needed to replenish the uh, cash flow of the corporation. What I'm going to do, I, I'll just leave that there, but try to remember when I score the game finally that there's an extra thousand bucks up in his pocket. Oh, I may actually be able to give that back with the purchases of stock. I think more money gone back in than came out. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that happened. I guess that pen share was worth more than the difference in the price on the Aries. Uh, the Aries only went down seven bucks maximum, and the pen was worth quite a bit. So there's a little more money I can pay that back. And then we'll spreadsheet everything basically, except for the money that goes in the corporation treasuries. I may have to put that thousand bucks back in to make up for that though. So as we enter the uh, final set of operating rounds, two things to show. One is the spreadsheeting, which I've divided up the different companies here, the different operating rounds. And I'll leave space here for final value as well, so that we, and then a total, so that we can see how much uh, is obtained per share held. And then we multiply that out and assign it to each player based on the amount of shares they have. Um, and that'll include the final uh, value of the, these shares. And it's hard to do this when you don't have the cash you know, running the entire thing on spreadsheeting doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you hand out the cash at the end of the operating rounds, that can work. The problem with it is that you have this written record, so that whole perception thing becomes uh, defined. Um, matter of taste as to whether or not you want to do that. But for this final round, it's obvious that it, nobody's going to be affected by this uh, spreadsheeting. So there's no reason not to record everything. Now in this case we see the CPs jumped up to 27. I think I've been screwing up with them by not making a track light, but it's hard to tell uh, what was going on. But they finally managed to get their hook up, which is through here, up, around, and then down this way. And now they'll be able to expand into here and perhaps get some additional cash. But I think 27 is probably the best they're going to do for this game. Basically, what they've done is they've managed 
to replace the Canadian West with these two spaces, which is what I wanted to do, but didn't seem able uh, to find the track to work with that. Well, it's finally in place now. <laughs> Probably could have happened earlier. All right, so we go on with the other companies, and I'll come back after the round and show you what they've all kind of done. I, think I caught myself having cheated with this CNO and maybe, uh, maybe someone else running from ba Baltimore uh, through here. Now, I finally laid the track that allows this, and it could have been laid quite a while ago, but it's one of the problems when you have kind of what was here was uh, this piece. When you have kind of spaghetti type situations, sometimes it's hard to see that, hey, I can't really do what I think I can do. And that's one of the things that came into maybe here was it looked like I couldn't do something that I could do. And here it looked like I already had track laid in place that um, allowed me to do something that I couldn't do. I'm not going to fix the values for it, but it's... Uh, commonly an occurrence as the track starts getting complex in XX uh, that somebody gets called out on, hey, that doesn't really work, or, or, or something along those lines. And for my mind, it's often, I, I'm often either making an assumption of that something works or doesn't work that's untrue, actually. And it's very difficult for me to operate uh, uh, visually, <laughs> in the sense that this this works. I, I'm better than some people at it, but uh, a lot of times I end up screwing up. And when I'm playing solitaire, there's nobody to watch me, so I'm even more likely to make a mess up. Of course, I make mess ups in all games, so no big deal there. And as we push into the second operating round, those are the stock values currently. But here's the production value. And we see most of the rails are in about the same shape. There's definitely some difference. The B&M 34 and H 33. Erie 29. CP and NYC at 27. And then sort of this further drop off down to the uh, 21, 20, and 19 for the Penn CNO and B&O who've been cut apart uh, by some of the token lays by the Erie and the NYC, which have really kind of slaughtered them. There aren't... Uh, tokens really left. The Erie doesn't have cash to put it, so neither does the CP, neither does the B&O. The NYNH has some cash, but nothing really wants to help. It could try to push uh, the Erie into a better shape if it had something it could do, but it just can't see a way of helping them. I think they're as optimized as they can get at 29 with the train that they have, essentially. If they had a bigger train, it would be great, but mm, nobody's going to do that. Uh, all right, onward. Well, the second operating round, and the third one indeed will as well, is just come down to a matter of uh, copying the values from the first one. Nobody saw an opportunity to add to their values, and in fact, the third one's going to be the same. We're going to see that the CP and B&O aren't going to advance here, but everybody else will go up in price uh, by one. They'll shift one space to the right. But the CNO, a kind of a bonus stock because it's on the top level and increased them uh, significantly and the pen is also up there whereas the CP and B&O didn't make the same kind of uh, return on the stock value what about the operating value well we've got those values there the CP is doing pretty well uh, the pen CNO and B&O are all kind of in the crappy level so the CP is Probably overall doing better. The NYC is pulling in good money. We'll see what this all uh, comes out. But what we don't really see is what the income value difference was between what the cost of the stock was to um, when you when you bought it, say, or held it in the last round, compared to what uh, it will be at the end. That's just something that doesn't show up when you spreadsheet this way. You just get the cash the amount of income from the runs and then the total value of the of the share and multiply that out see what everybody gets all i've done at this point is counted up the cash on hand now that's usually a very good indicator of where you're going to win somebody gets a big lead there and they probably have it because uh, everybody's portfolio is likely pretty much the same and they've already had somebody with a lot of cash on hand probably already had a fairly strong portfolio in terms of stock holdings and what we see here is the first player 
with 3,051 is well ahead of anyone else. In fact, the second player whom I was worried about is fairly far behind. It's player four with the Erie NYNH and uh, six with the Penn and the B&M who are doing well uh, with just cash on hand. Now, stock value definitely comes into this. There is no question. But if you look at what people are holding, well, he's got a fair holding. Uh, he's going to lose some ground there. There's no question because, yes, the B&O and the Penn uh, are way up there along with the CP, but he's got a lot of the lesser stocks. Whereas, let's see, this guy's got a stronger holding in C&O, B&O. Uh, he's kind of weak with those B&Ms in there. So we're going to see, because of the... Uh, you know, the cash difference, the big money makers in terms of stock value primarily. We're not really too worried about how much income they make uh, because when you add up the total of the value of the stock, it's going to be the last round's income plus the stock value. Well, the big holders there are the CP, uh, the B&O, and the C&O, the guys who shot to the top point because it's 50 bucks more a share and it's hard to overcome that kind of <laughs> advantage there. All it really means is the guy with the most cash is probably a guy who already was well invested and holding a lot of good stuff. Uh, we'll finish this up and see what we end up with. And things turned out significantly less exciting than I thought they were. Um, in terms of stock value, the guy with the most cash actually had the second most stock value. Only the CNO owner was holding more stock value there. And he was significantly behind in cash. He just, you know, happened to not be making the payouts, perhaps, uh, in that period when the B&O was cranking to the same extent. So his C&Os weren't making as much money, although they certainly gained good stock value there. Um, totals, 76.47. Second place actually did go to the C&O with 68.33. In a sense, we could have left out those last two operating rounds. They were ahead back then. And that's one of the things. Very seldomly do you see a route big enough to really disrupt the game. And that's one reason why it's almost never worth trying to aim to get the diesel, for example. Because that's not going to provide that kind of payoff. The diesels would have to go everywhere to really uh, destabilize the game. Whereas if you can manage, manage, and nobody did this, to get two permanent trains on your company, well, you do a couple of things. One, you force somebody else who wouldn't otherwise have to do it to buy one of these diesels, and they're usually a bad buy. Uh, and the other is really uh, that, you know, you're going to be cranking almost twice the value that some of the other smaller, uh, some of the other companies can make. You're not going to get twice the value that, say, I don't know, uh, who, who was able to really crank in there. Well, I don't know. You can certainly get into the 50s with this. And we saw nothing like that showing up here, right? I mean, most of the uh, most of the stock values were in the mid twenties, or uh, uh, dividends were in the mid twenties at the end of the game. This was a tight game in terms of closing things off and not allowing uh, people a nice any nice runs. This setup in New York ended up very very ugly for just about everyone, really. I mean, the fact that the NYC didn't get what it tried to build particularly. It got closed out here. It was hoping to build what would have been a nice diesel run. Not that they had a diesel anyway, but they would have loved to be running this kind of run out maybe into the Chicago area or up into the Oo's. Um, those uh, are, are tough to manage though and you know uh, getting getting sliced here and then the placement that they finally did make was just really a defensive one cutting other people. Anyway, uh, the game is usually more about managing your trains, making sure you get the good trains rather than route building, uh, making sure you have your investments correct uh, in terms of stocks. Don't, you know, 
be certain that you don't get screwed with a company you didn't want to, but also trying to manage your trains in a, in a, and, and corporations in a manner in which they're not going to crash each other and cause yourself a great deal of harm. But on the other hand, you can look and, other pe and see that other people have the ability to hurt you too. And you've got to protect against that and, and keep everything kind of in mind. Sometimes the best thing to do is run lots and lots of two trains. That's usually a great way to get things kicked off. But other people are going to make a lot of income off that and be able to crash your trains quicker that way. And then the question is, what did you do to save yourself? How did, how did you make, you know, what contingencies do you have? Do you have enough cash that you can float another company? And then with that early money, uh, run a couple of companies that are moderate, no big, no big income makers, but then continuously are growing in stock value. And, and, and put you in a good position. Here, I don't think we ever saw anybody in a really dominating position. The people who got two companies, well, there was definitely some threat there with the Penn and the B&M. And if the B&M had really been able to cut loose and get out and run all over the place, it would have been an ugly thing. And that's part of why you saw dots coming out. Uh, where you might have not seen them if the B&M hadn't come down there. Well, certainly the NYC one wouldn't have come out. Uh, another thing, well, the Erie, this guy had to take a big hit. Now, he ended up finishing in the last place because of that big late hit that he took, having to buy a diesel, not entirely out of pocket, but significantly so. What about the other people who paid out of pocket? Well, uh, the B&M didn't end up getting too hurt by that. The NYNH owner ended up also in a fairly good position, although surprisingly he ended up behind the guy who had to pay for the uh, the B and M one. He had to pay more out of pocket, maybe because of swallowing or whatever. The NYNH just didn't do as well. It's hard. It's hard sometimes to uh, dissect the game after a big. Uh, you know, complex one. It's uh, one way of easily do of more easily doing that. And what I used to do is spreadsheeting more of the values. That allows you to get a better grasp on what's going on and to understand it a little better. Uh, another thing that I'd suggest, is, and I think I have at least online, uh, I did on a post, is the best way to learn this game uh, and, and and to get your feel and and your gut instincts for it better is to play it in a very low number of players, two even, or three or four players, with one really experienced person, and just watch how they dominate the entire play of the game and control everything that's going on. Uh, I've seen a couple of people really learn well from that kind of experience. They, you have to already have a base understanding, I guess, of the game to get that uh, kind of feel. Otherwise, well... Um, I know I had a lot of fun learning the game by playing it in the sense of playing with a whole bunch of new people when I first started. We, none of us knew what was going on. We played the short game and it was just this takeaway wow moment. You know, <laughs> this is one of the harshest games we've ever seen and it is so cutthroat. And uh, since then, I think we've learned a lot more that it's not really. Anyway, I, I should probably save some of this for the review side of things. All right, up it goes.